everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today to be here to be talking about the fall harvest films that are coming up and the films on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries for September and October. Going to be really fun. We have we love our preview shows. They're always a lot of fun. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Dory and Mel from All the Fills are here. Hey, oh yeah, we are. Hey. <laughs> And we were at one point kind of worried that we weren't going to get fall harvest at all, but we get, we're getting 14 films that wow. we have here to talk about. So 14. Gonna, yeah. Total bananas. Bananas. I yeah, I know. I, <laughs> and I mean, that's not even including the Christmas movies that we'll get in October. So we'll have more than 14 films released by Hallmark channel in two months. Hmm. So basically, get all your napping in now. All, your, yeah, all the stuff right. you can get, pack it in now. That's right. Romance oh is God. coming at your eyeballs. <laughs> so, how have you two been? How, did you have a good summer? Winding it's, down. It still feels like summer. It's still hot. Mm-hmm. As yeah. Heck. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to fall. It's been way too hot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just so. I'm not a big summer fan as it is. I'm it's just to me, it's just I just got to get to fall. Just bring it yeah. on. So how yeah. about you? Well, I mean, I love the summer because I love swimming in the ocean and the water and the lakes, whichever is close to me. I love open water swimming. Finished my 16th uh, race in August. And awesome. I've been open oh, water swimming for 10 years. My first one was in 2011. So it's pretty, pretty fun. And I was able to do two this year, which I'm very proud of and excited. Uh, I did the Great Salt Lake and I did uh, Deer Creek, uh, their marathon swim. And uh, so, yeah, it's been a great, uh, a great summer for me. And I got to go to the ocean and <laughs> we did our live, uh, live recap of Crashing Through the Snow together. That was fun. That was yeah, fun. That was yeah. fun. It was really fun. It was a great trip. And I loved getting to see the ocean. That was really it's nice. Wonderful. And and that uh the Airbnb that we stayed at had the best pool I think I've ever seen. It was so nice. So I was very happy. Whenever I'm in the water, I'm happiest. So you're basically part mermaid or yeah, mer lady. We don't right. is mermaid like un uncouth <laughs> now? I don't know. That's right. No, that's correct. Uh, oh, well, nice. what we do in these previews is we always have our little ranking system for how excited we are. And these mean nothing because a lot of times ones we're very excited for end up being terrible and ones that we're not excited for all end up being great. So, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> so this is all pointless. <laughs> it's all pointless. It's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun. It. Exactly. It's just for fun. So don't take it too seriously. Uh, <laughs> out there. Uh, but what we do for the fall is we have leaves, one to five leaves of excitement. So, <laughs> leaves okay. of excitement. Yes. Leaves we'll of excitement. Let, let's let the leaves rain down then. That's right. That's right. All right. Here we go. Let's start. This is actually technically a Summer Nights movie, but they added it way late. And so we didn't have it in our second wave preview. <laughs> we did. Uh, so this one is called Journey of My Heart, which is September 4th. It stars Rhiannon Fish and Darian Martin. And the summary is a young wildlife biologist travels to a remote Alaskan nesting area of bald eagles where she receives inspirational guidance <laughs> from a Native American family and help from a mysterious wilderness guide. This is the only one of all the ones that we're talking. We're filming this, we're recording this, excuse me. We're recording this on the 19th of August because I'm going to be going out of town at the end of the month. And this is the only one that we currently have a trailer for. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what do you think? What's your, what are you thinking about it, uh, Mel? I mean, I there's a lot of, in that synopsis, there's a lot of things that I feel like Hallmark can... Uh, get wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of chance for corny as well um yeah. the trailer does have a moment where eagles land and they're like look at those majestic eagles they're gonna be in love forever and i'm like i don't think that's how eagles work 
but yeah, are they I like don't know. dolphins that like are like penguins that mate? You know, that yeah, mate. mate forever. And I mean, also, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Alaska. I've only been. I, not Never. like I'm an Alaskan expert. I've been there for like two weeks, maybe, of my entire life. But eagles there are like seagulls. Like they're like mm-hmm. vermin. Like, like they're not. I don't know. They're not a majestic. Yeah. They're like you know. You see them picking trash out of the dumpsters. This is all beside the point. <laughs> I, we should ask uh, Hallmark author Lizzie Shane. She okay. is from Alaska. So oh, okay. Ask her. <laughs> She's gonna do it justice then. Maybe I'm just jaded about eagles. But the trailer, the trailer did not do it for me. I'm not uh-huh. all that excited. I also. I'm a hard sell on the Summer Nights movies in general. So, Ooh, okay. So, uh, what do you think, Dory, about this one? I, I mean, y'all just heard me laugh the minute you started <laughs> reading it. Um, <laughs> so, I have concerns, particularly the she receives inspirational guidance mm-hmm. from a Native American family. Yeah, it's, I feel mm, like that can either be dangerous. really interesting and really nice, or it can be not so nice potentially offensive yeah that's what i was worried about too so i i have concerns yeah i i could see it going that way (laughs) (laughs) rachel says it's so nice i know i can see it going that way yeah but i do think this rihanna fish is super cute and I thought I thought she seemed really sweet and fun, bubbly in the trailer. And she's been in a bunch of Hallmark movies. So it's kind of exciting for her to get a lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in the 27 hour day recently. Uh, she uh, she was in your baking me crazy. Uh, so she's been in a number of Hallmark movies and she just seems super cute. And uh, so I'm just kind of excited to see what she brings to the table and not for nothing but darian martin is you know Handsome. pretty attractive yeah. so yeah. we'll get some we'll be able to look at him we'll be able to look at the pretty scenery we'll be able to look at bald eagles nesting maybe so, it'll be great i was just looking him up on imdb because i'm like what do i know him from and of course it's from you know hannah swenson bacon you know murder she baked but the name of this movie is listed as Love on the e- Wings of Eagles. Am I reading this wrong? I'm assuming this is the same movie. Well, this is definitely a no! acquisition. That has a different listed cast, The Love on the Wings of Eagles. Oh, okay, so maybe this is a different... It possibly be in two... No, no, it doesn't have a different cast. Sorry, it was just in a different order. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's the alternate name. Love on the Wings, Love on the... Love on the wings of Eagles! Oh my god! I like that better. I like it better than Journey of My Heart. That's so bland. Yeah, you guys, you guys, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's Love hilarious. on the Wings of Eagles. Journey of My no. Heart could be literally any movie. Oh, yeah, this That's is true. true. <laughs> like you're not going to forget Love on the Wings of Eagles. It's no. like Mother May I Sleep with Danger. It's going to stick with you for your entire life. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> well, I actually, I'm going to be optimistic. And I'm going to give this 3.5 leaves. Wow. Yeah. I, I just really, I actually thought it looked kind of cute, the trailer. And I think she looked really cute. So I'm hopeful. So we'll see. Cool. But uh, yeah, it has a high um, uh, failure possibility. But I'm going to be optimistic. <laughs> All right. But what about you, Mel? How many leaves if you get it? I'll give it two because Alaska is cool. Mm-hmm. And Dory? I'm also going to give it two leaves. All right. Okay. So then we have Roadhouse Romance. And this is on the 11th. And it stars Lauren Elena and Tyler Hines. And it's directed by Paul Ziller, who's done a ton of Hallmark movies, including Love and Store and Just My Type. Uh, And then the writer is named Sally Robinson, and this is her first for Hallmark. So that's kind of exciting. And it's when Callie returns home, she finds her hometown has changed. Her first love has a new girl, girl and her family's barbecue restaurant has hit hard times. She clashes with a marooned big shot director who might hold the key to saving the restaurant. 
So what do you think about this one, Dory? Um, I like the word roadhouse in it. I think that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fun. Memories of Patrick Swayze. Yeah, very Swayze. Um, I'm kind of confused about what this will be. You know, like what's a big shot director going to do? to save her family restaurant but you know what it's hallmark i'm sure they'll give me a reason yeah, um, like a, is it is a director a direct of a film or a show or something that's what doesn't i don't matter. get doesn't matter <laughs> it's marooned it's big he's, shot director yeah why is yeah. he marooned like i have questions you're just gonna direct a commercial for the restaurant i don't know i don't oh don't maybe know. maybe and what is like is her first love is this going to be a love triangle situation? Um, oh, I just assumed that was Tyler, but maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Like, is the love interest her first love or is it the big shot director? I don't uh, know. Who is the yeah. big shot director? I don't know. So yeah. um, I don't know. I think that I am intrigued by this one. And, you know... I, I'm always down to watch a Tyler Hines movie. So yeah, I feel, I feel okay about this one. Definitely better than on the wings of Eagles love or whatever. <laughs> you write a lot of those titles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what about you? Um, I would say that this sounds like three generic Hallmark plots sewn into one. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to love it. Right. Um, and I love Tyler Hines. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it no matter what for him. He's one of my faves. So mm -hmm. that's how I feel. Yeah. And uh, Lauren uh, Alina, she was on American Idol. Mm. And okay. she's done uh, Nashville. She's done a few other things. She doesn't have a ton of acting experience. But... You know, Tyler seems to be able to have chemistry with it, with everybody. I mean, we joke on the podcast that the next movie, we're just going to pull somebody off the street and say, you're in a Tyler Hines movie. Oh, I guess. <laughs> he has such good chemistry with everybody. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, so I'm going to give it three, uh, three leaves. What about you, Mel? I'll go three as well. And Dory? I am going to go three as well. All right. Then on the 18th, we have Raise a Glass to Love. And this is starring Juan Pablo de Pace, Laura Osnes, and Matthew James Dowden, who we're big fans of on this uh, podcast. Uh, he's really fun. And it follows an aspiring master sommelier, Jenna, who returns to her family vineyard to study and is fascinated by the natural methods of the new winemaker, Marcelo. And I just want to say, obviously, it's somewhat controversial because Laura Osnes quit her Broadway show or her concert thing that she did because she didn't want to get vaccinated. And we are a pro-vaccination podcast here. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in some resources, I'm going to put in the description uh, about vaccination. And that's all we're really going to say about that. But I, I think it's really, really important that we get vaccinated. So that information will be available to anybody who wants it. Yeah, let's, let's raise a glass to vaccines. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how we end up with so many controversial topics. I, you know, I, you think hosting a Hallmark podcast, you're going to be free, but no, <laughs> it's true. No. Any, all things are political <laughs> in their, in their own way. But anyway, um, but let's talk about this idea for this film. Uh, Dory, what are your thoughts as far as this plot? I have to be honest. I'm kind of over the winemaker thing. Um, I feel like we've seen it before th with those vineyard movies and everything. I'm just not really into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fat, fascinated by the natural methods of the new winemaker like I don't know this sounds very hybrid pear to me if you all remember that <laughs> if you all remember that fall harvest movie I don't I'm not looking forward to this one I don't think I'll enjoy it um, 
and yeah, it's giving me farming technology, new fruit creations. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm just not excited. <laughs> Yeah, I've said it many times before that the scientific farmer movies are not my favorite. The whole, like, is the poinsettia going to turn red? Is the <laughs> wine going to be ready? Is the whatever? I They're know. almost always terrible. It's not the yeah. best. It's just not the best no. conceit. <laughs> and it's we just haven't super seen boring. it done well in a really long time. And no. Maybe ever? Not, maybe ever. And this doesn't sound any better <laughs> yeah. to me. Like, the only time I can think of is when it's kind of very adjacent, like Harvest Wedding, because Victor Webster's character was kind of a scientific farmer, but it was like not the main plot. It was just like yeah. a little side plot. It was like that... we have to win a, a <laughs> wine award to keep the winery yeah. open or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. One of the first movies that we reviewed on the podcast was the uh, was the um, Summer in the Vineyard, the second one, the mm. Vineyard movie. And oh my gosh, I thought, what am I getting myself into? This movie was so... <laughs> Not great. Did not like yeah. it. Yeah, those and, aren't great. Yeah, for sure. So I have the same reticence that you have, Dory. I think that sounds really boring, mm-hmm. and so I don't know. I just I don't drink wine. I don't have no investment in wine. Even if I did, it still sounds boring to me. You know, <laughs> I, I, as someone who drinks wine, it's not exciting to watch people drink wine on TV. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know how that tastes, and you know whatever. It's, yeah you're not missing anything <laughs> yeah there was one on lifetime this last uh, christmas that was that was really weird because they kept trying to make all these like family events at the winery and i'm like what like i don't know that just seems like it's not the first place i would think to go like hang out with my kids at like a wine tasting i don't know yeah. to me but <laughs> uh, i'm gonna give this one one leave. I'm not looking forward to it, unfortunately. All right. Should I go? Yeah, go. Okay. What do you think? I'm going to give it two leaves only because I like uh, Juan Pablo de Pace or whatever. Is that how mm-hmm. did I say his name right? I loved him in Fuller House. I'm a big, fan, oh. I'm a big Fuller House fan. So I, you know, welcome to him. I mean, I know he's been in other things too, but I didn't realize that was I that like same guy. Movie. I think he is right mm-hmm. now I'm doubting myself but I'm pretty sure because he's always has the same name you know it's like isn't he <laughs> I have no idea I, I didn't um, expect that anyway he plays Kimmy Gibbler's husband mm-hmm. or ex-husband turned husband I don't know confusing oh uh, yeah you're you're right yeah absolutely Fernando on full that's house that's right that's right uh what do you think Tori I am so sorry. I have to give this one dead brown, <laughs> crusty, crunchy, torn leaf. V- like, vineyard leaf. <laughs> yeah. Like I I cannot muster any excitement for this one, unfortunately. Understandable. All right. Next we have on the 25th, we have Taking the Reins. And this stars Mickey DeLoach, Scott Porter, Corbin Burnson, and Deneen Turner. It's directed by Claire Niederprum. And she has like a mixed resume, but she's been doing pretty good lately. For Hallmark, at least. She did her pen pal, which was really great <laughs> uh, over the summer, in my opinion, at least. Uh, she did The Christmas Bow, which I loved last Christmas. Uh, and As Luck Would Have It, which wasn't as great this last spring, uh, the Ireland movie. Um, So then we have the summary is a writer discovers what ended her marriage and why she stopped riding horses after going back to her family ranch. So this sounds interesting. Uh, You've got a a divorce character discovering what ended her marriage or something like that, which I think is interesting. And, And Nikki has been picking kind of a unusual projects the last couple of years since I feel like for for Hallmark what do you yeah. think uh, what do you think Dory I mean Nikki Deloach loves a marriage and trouble story <laughs> it seems um yeah. but I love her and I I'm I'm in it you know I am interested to watch this one um yeah 
and I love I, this cast. I mean, Scott Porter. Yeah, I mm -hmm. am so excited he's coming over to Hallmark. Agree. Like I, I like the cast too. Um, I'm definitely excited to give this one a shot. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I tend to like the projects that Nikki Deloach chooses. To be honest, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know if I have high, high hopes for this one. But I'm certainly um, intrigued and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of, I'm trying to think of a bad Nikki Deloach movie. I mean, I feel like even her worst ones are still like watchable. Right. Uh, is, it, what, is she in the one where she like fall, she falls off the ladder and wakes up not married? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Christmas that, that, Wish, I think. Or that one was Christmas, troubling. Christmas maybe. Dream. Christmas Dream. Yeah. Anyway. It was it was it was okay. It wasn't great. The plot was but... troubling. <laughs> but I like a little more whimsy than you do too. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think I I feel like I had a feminist like crisis watching it because it was like, <laughs> would you be happy or not married? No, never. You'll never be happy not married. I don't know. It was like, <laughs> okay, if I remember it correctly, it was. Yeah, yeah. It's many years ago. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh... What do we want to give? How many leaves? Uh, I'm going to give, I'm going to be optimistic and give this four leaves. What do you think, Mel? Uh, I'm also going to give it four leaves because I love Nikki DeLoach. I love Scott Porter. I'm a big Friday Night Lights. In Heart of Dixie, right? He's in Heart of Dixie. Yep. Yeah, yep. I also love the Christmas bow. And it was so good. It was very I, good. And um, I love watching people ride horses and then also i mean to be like yeah. sad i guess i don't know to take it to a sadder place like i followed nikki deloach on instagram and she's been promoting this movie kind of in tandem with like dealing with the grief her like real life oh, grief yeah. over losing her father and it's kind of just made me be like really like you know like i want this movie to succeed for her like mm -hmm. <laughs> i like want mm -hmm this to be she obviously cares a lot about it and it's all and it also seems like it's helping her yeah in this time to like have something to focus on and i don't know yeah I, it's it seems like it has a lot of meaning to her so i am mm -hmm. i'm in yeah what about you dory i'm gonna give it four leaves as well i'm hopeful that it's gonna be good and um you know it sounds like we're all very firmly team nikki so we no, want yeah, her to do well and want her to succeed because she's the best we'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode and that is the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Next, we have Love Strikes Twice. And this is on the 2nd of October. And it stars Katie Findlay and Wyatt Nash, who hasn't been in a Hallmark movie for quite a while. So welcome back, Wyatt Nash. <laughs> and uh, it's director Jeff Beasley who has done some good stuff. Uh, he did the Christmas Club and he did Project Christmas Wish, which was a lot of people, at least on our podcast, really liked last year. And then uh, writer C.J. Cox, his first Hallmark movie, but he has written a lot of feature films, including Sweet Home Alabama, which I think is cool. <laughs> I'm like, we gotta, I want to find him, call it, uh, get him for an interview. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Home Alabama. I feel like they're playing that movie on TBS or TNT at every moment of the day. And I've probably seen it 1 million times. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Maggie and Josh are an out of sync married couple. Maggie wishes for a do over and wakes up 15 years earlier. Will she choose Josh again or is an ex boyfriend her happily ever after? I have to admit, I'm a real sucker for these kinds of things like the switching bodies or like wake up in another space or like, 
It's like sliding doors. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> I like that kind of thing. Uh, and I mean, the only thing that makes me kind of wonder is if if Wyatt Nash is going to be able to pull off playing 15 years younger than himself. That's quite a bit, 15 years. But whatever. I I think uh, I, I'm I think it's going to. I'm optimistic about this one. Uh, what about you, Mel? What do you think? Um, I mean, I like, just how I went on that Nikki Deloach rant. Um, I I always have problems when it's like, should I have picked this guy? I get a do over to decide that ultimately, yes, I'm going to pick the guy because I don't know. I feel like that's what you always learn when you wake up 15 years earlier or whatever is like, mm-hmm. oh, like without the thing you had. Oh no, I always wanted the thing I had. Um, I don't know. I. I don't know why I find these movies so troubling, but I do sometimes. So mm-hmm. I am not optimistic. Yeah. What do you think, Dory? I'm kind of in the middle of you both. Like I'm not, I don't think it sounds great, but I also don't necessarily <laughs> find it problematic either. Um, I'm kind of neutral about it. Like we'll see what it's all about, but I'm intrigued that the writer wrote Sweet Home Alabama and then wrote this. So maybe that's a good sign. And I'm, but I'm also concerned about the schedule. Like, are they doing two marriage in trouble or like failing relationship movies back to back? Like that seems weird to me. I would have spaced these out a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know, like, are we going to be over it by the time we get to Love Strikes Twice? I don't know. And yeah, I did think that was, that's, just, that jumped out at me as well. Uh, and and we have, not only do we have those movies, but we also have some pretty intense movies over on Movies and Mysteries, because we don't really have any mysteries uh, this season. They're all kind of more dramas. Maybe the first one is a little bit, but but they're not like cozy mysteries in the sense of we usually have had them. They're all kind of standalone dramas. And so, yeah, this can be quite a bit of drama um, for Hallmark in between the two channels. But uh, if you're listening, White Nash or any of your people, please come on the podcast because he is a former Survivor player and I would die if I got a chance to interview somebody from Survivor because I love Survivor. And uh, I mean, I like his work as well. (laughs) He was on Ford v. Ferrari. He he was on Riverdale. Anyway, he's great. Come on the podcast. We would be so excited. Um, But I I really do genuinely like stories like this. Uh, My favorite movie is an anime film called Your Name, where two uh, teenagers switch bodies and I, I love it. It's, it's one of my, it's, it's my favorite movie. And uh, so I just like that kind of dynamic of like being in, out of being in someone else's skin, like having to kind of, I don't know, just reassess your whole life. And um, so I'm going to be optimistic on this. I'm going to give it four leaves. I know crazy, but uh, what about you, Dory? I'll give it three okay good and mel one okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so that can be a one fresh leaf fresh leaf. To be dead okay. Chris <laughs> fresh okay. leaf all in yeah next we have south beach love and this is based on hallmark publishing novel caridad pinero we actually interviewed caridad and uh, we picked it as our uh, book of the month in June, uh, me and Brie. And it was such a fun book. And I was really hoping that they, if they were going to make a version of this movie, I was really hoping that they would cast the, um, did you guys watch Beauty and the Baker? Yes. I loved, I loved it so much. And I just think that Mateo and Vanessa would have been amazing in the that's the characters on the show obviously but those actors would have been so good in this role because the book it she did such a good job of like developing palpable like chemistry between these two chefs 
And there was just, there was all these like little moments when they would kind of flirt and, and, uh, and just be sort of a little bit intimate with each other. It was so great. And by the time they get together, you're just like, yes. And I really liked the book a lot. And so I was a little bit disappointed, even though I love Taylor. I really do. Taylor Cole, William Levy, and William Levy is Cuban, but I don't know. I just, I guess it's just not who I pictured when I was reading the book and I'm sure they'll do great. But anyway, it's, I mean, the only summary we have right now is it follows a story about rival Quintanera's glorious Cuban cooking, friendship, family, and romance. And basically what the book is, the story in the book is that you have the, and the male character that's gone off to New York city. He'd become like a super famous chef and his family's in South Beach. And the sister of his best friend uh, growing up has started her own restaurant in South Beach. And both of them get asked to do the food for their, it's his sister, her niece, I believe, or reversed. Anyway, they get asked to do the quintinera for um, their families. And then this reporter comes in and is doing a piece on quintineras and like kind of puts them up against each other. And so they're sort of rivals. It's, I thought it was really good. I liked it a lot. And uh, so it may not be the casting that I dreamed of, but I still am excited because I just thought the story was really good. So fingers crossed. Um, but Dory, what do you think about this one? Um, I think, th- I mean, I think it sounds cute based on what you've just said and the summary. I also wish that the lead or heroine was a Latina woman. I don't, I mean, it takes place in South Beach. It's like surrounding all yeah. these heats Like that kind of disappoints me, to be honest. And I love Taylor Cole too. I just, seeing casting like this sometimes really frustrates me. And, um, I think I'll probably enjoy this movie. Like it sounds really cute, but I, I wish the casting had been different. I really do. Yeah. Do you agree, Mel? Absolutely. Plus they had, but overall they have me at rival Quintanera. Like I'm in. Yeah, for sure. I agree about the casting for sure. It seems like a missed opportunity. Yep. So I'm going to give this one three leaves. What about you, Mel? I agree. Three sounds good. Do you agree, Dory? Yeah, I'm going to give it three also. All right. So our last from Hallmark Channel is called Flirting with Romance. So our last for Hallmark Channel is called Flirting with Romance. And that's on the 16th of October. So this will be our goodbye to Mm -hmm. (laughs) non-Christmas. This will be the last hurrah. It stars Aaron Westbrook and Brooke Starnell. And it's follow a love advice author and a dating columnist who feel attracted to each other and both use strategies from their own playbooks to win over the other. So I like Brooke Starnell. He's charming. I don't know if I know this Aaron Westbrook well, but what did you think of this one? Uh, What do you think, Val? I mean, this kind of plot is like right up my alley. I love <laughs> like singletons that the dating advice and all that stuff that are misguided. Usually um, the title could not be more generic. Um, and that's really, I mean, I'll at this point we'll be like knee deep in like promos for Christmas. So yeah. we'll be like, I don't know if my head's going to be in fall at this point. Do you? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I do have one side question for you real quick. Now, last year, remember when, so Lifetime was like, hey, we have all these movies and Hallmark and we're going to premiere super early. And then Hallmark was like, wait, no, then we're going to premiere early. And they like ripped all of their like movies off. Do you think flirting with disaster is, you know, well, it's heading for disaster. It was 2019 where they did that with, um, with uh, playing with, uh, with country at heart. And they had well, they had two. They had Country at Heart, and they had the, the olive mystery, oil, the olive oil movie, and oh, right. mystery. There was a, um, uh, there was a maybe an Aurora. Um, no, I think right, it was an Aurora. They did, they 
maybe they did cancel one of the crosswords mysteries last that's year. That's right. They did. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I just, that's, that's just bonkers to me. I mean, I guess now we're in the age where even big time releases are getting moved, but at the very least, like they usually, when they move these big time releases, they usually give us like a little bit of notice in like, Hallmark's case. They pretend like it's not even happening. It'll be like two days before the release. And then all yeah. of a sudden it's just gone. And they make no yeah. statement, no nothing. And you're just like, what? Yeah. So we'll but see if see it, it happens. I'm yeah. sure that this is an acquisition. So it would probably, I don't think they'd lose sleep if they lost it. Well, Tori, what do you think? Sorry. <laughs> I, I hijacked it. Sorry. Yeah. Tori, what do you think? I'm like Mel, I'm all in on this premise, dating columnists. Like I love, I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is my jam. Um, but you just mentioned that this is an acquisition. So that Mm -hmm. has me concerned. Um, but I do love Brooks Darnell. I'm not familiar with Aaron Westbrook, but I did, um, IMDB here and she looks very cute. Um, looks like, you know, a wonderful Hallmark heroine, but acquisition. Yeah, I I have concerns. And I also have concerns like you were just talking about, that this will just get ripped off the schedule and, and we'll never see the light of day. So I'm not getting my hopes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if I'm, I'm not sure on the alternate title, but I'm pretty sure that this was re- already been released in Canada. I'm pretty sure it's one of those. Okay. Yeah, so Canada, let us know if it was any good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so I am going to give this one two leaves. What about you, Dory? I'm way more excited. I'm going to give it four. Ooh, and you agree, Mel? I'll go right in the middle and go three. Okay, good. All right, now we are in the world of mysteries. Well, movies and mysteries. Uh, the so the first one's going to be on the twelfth, uh, and then we have Redemption in Cherry Springs, and we don't have a single like I said we don't have a single one of our franchises. The, the they're doing the Aurora Tea Garden honeymoon movie, and then in August, and then after that, that's it uh, for the rest of the year. No more no. franchises. Yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, so Redemption in Cherry Springs, the stars Rochelle Eitz. Uh, Keith Robinson and Frankie Faison. It's director Letitia Clouston. And she did one of your favorites, Mel. I think she did A Christmas for the Books, which I know you. You got to remind me what that was. The, the, the one where enough. there's the weird retreat and she has the guy pretend to be her boyfriend because she's like a dating advice uh, writer. And it was very weird. <laughs> the one with the hot air balloons that was like supposed no. to be. Okay. Okay. No, it, that one wasn't Christmas. Is it? Okay. <laughs> That's true. It was very summer. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> it, was, it was really bad. Anyway. Um, and then writers new to Hallmark, John Bellina and Talia Gonzalez. And it's after fallout from a story, reporter Melanie goes home to Cherry Springs for a break. When a friend disappears, she uses her skills to get to the truth to the local detective's uh, dismay. And and this is by executive producer Judy Smith, who is the EP of Scandal. So working with Shonda Rhimes. So what do you think about that, Dory? I'm all in on this. I'm super excited. I've been waiting for it. Um... Anne, Hallmarkies Anne, our friend Anne has been messaging me anytime there's any news about this movie. She's like, did you see this? Mm -hmm. Did you see this? Did you see this? She's keeping me in the loop. God bless her. And I'm super excited. Give give me a million of these movies. And Rochelle, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, 
she was in Christmas Tree Girls in Colorado last year. She came on the podcast. She was great. I, that movie was way better than I expected it to be. It really was. <laughs> that was that was a surprise how yeah. cute that movie was. Yeah. yeah. So I, and I said, I remember on the podcast saying, if she wants to do this, she can. She's great. And so I'm glad to see that she does <laughs> want to do it <laughs> because I, I just thought she had, you can just tell when somebody is a good fit for these movies mm-hmm. and, uh, and sometimes they go on to do a bunch of them and sometimes they don't, but you can tell that if they want to, they can do it. Uh, but what do you think, Mel? I mean, there's nothing I love more than a Hallmark mystery. They're my favorite. I cannot mm. get enough of them. Um, and then this one in particular, the trailer looks very intense, which is mm-hmm. very exciting. Uh, I could not tell you one thing that's going on in it. It's very like, what? It's, it's very much peril, a lot of peril, a lot of lifetime type peril. But man, I'm so excited. Yeah. I, I didn't even know this was coming until I was looking up stuff for this podcast. And no, I cannot wait. I want to watch it immediately. Well, and I, 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 I tend to like the mysteries better when I feel like it's like semi believable that they would be amateur. <laughs> it's like, I don't know it, when it gets just, I, I always tease Dory about the, don't bring show. up Billy <laughs> blessings. Don't, don't you dare talk bad about Billy Blessings in <laughs> my morning presence. Morning show host uh, just is a little bit of a stretch for me to believe. Makes sense to me. <laughs> but no doesn't she also here. own a restaurant? Does she... <laughs> she owns a restaurant. No problems well, here. Yeah. Do no. not do not blaspheme Billy Blessings and Al Roker. That's <laughs> why it's right. a... that's right. Slander, my, my king, <laughs> my king, my king of kings. But it's yeah. the same way with like the matchmaking with the uh, with the crossword puzzle editor. Like it's just I like him better <laughs> when it's like a little more believable. Like Ruby Herring being a an investigative reporter. That makes sense, you know. Anyway, so this makes sense. She's a reporter. She's diving into stories. It, it just makes sense. So I, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I, I'm going to give this 3.5 leaves. What about you, Dory? Five, baby. Ah, all right. Yeah. And Mel? This, I feel like this but, is a can't miss for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all five for me, too. Okay, Big old pile good. of five leaves. Okay, <laughs> then we have... Big old <laughs> pile of five leaves. Which is like not even a pile. <laughs> It's like a dust, a dusting of leaves. Not yeah. even a handful. <laughs> <laughs> so then on the nineteenth, we have Finding Love in Mountain View. This uh, stars Dan- Daniel C. Ryan and Miko Olivier, directed by Sandra L. Martin, and um, and written by uh, D. F. W. Buckingham. Uh, neither of them have done anything for Hallmark. They have done other projects for like Ion and some of the other networks. But after learning that she's been entrusted to take care of her deceased cousin's children, an architect is torn between focusing on her career and honoring her cousin's wish. So I... Uh, I think I actually pronounced it. So it's Danielle, Danielle C. Ryan and Miko Olivier. And uh, yeah, so she inherits kids. <laughs> they love that yeah. in Hallmark movies. We already had that once uh, yeah. in, uh, this year, but now it's cousins. Uh, what do you think, Dory? I don't know. I don't know. This sounds... I don't know if I'm going to want a tearjerker on September 19th when we're heading into Christmas, when they're going to be, you know, the tearjerker Christmas movies. I just don't think I'm going to be in the state of mind for this when it airs. I honestly don't. It's and been a rough year and a half. I, can, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> this is definitely an acquisition. Oh, uh, yeah. No, yeah. not excited at all. Sorry. And I'm a little concerned because I know that Wanya has said a number of times, Wanya Lucas, this the new uh, new director of programming, that she has said a lot about wanting to bring more emotion into the films. And the thing that I worry about a little bit is I don't want 
Hallmark to become Nicholas Sparks light. You know what I'm saying? Like when you go to a Nicholas Sparks movie and you know somebody's going to die of cancer by the end of it. I don't want that in my Hallmark movies. And so I just hope that we're not going that direction. I want my fluffy rom-coms. I mean, I think there's room for everything. I think we've just gone through a list of a ton of movies that don't sound sad in the lightest, in the slightest. Yeah. And here we are with the first one that sounds kind of tearjerker y. Like, my issues are purely personal. I just don't want a tearjerker necessarily. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that, you know, I, I think at least for this season, this. You know, I can yeah. understand wanting to add something with a little more emotion. Why not? I mean, I mean, this feels like it's a Hallmark drama, you know, mm-hmm. project. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's on Movies and Mysteries. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's a, that you mentioned that he did Ion projects, because when I was watching the trailer for this, it felt like an Ion movie. You know, it's mm-hmm. they just look a little different, you yeah. know? Yeah. The music's a little different and it that's what it felt like to me um also no one's ever going to do this plot as well as raising helen so why are we trying you yeah know? and it's you know, kate hudson <laughs> did it we're done yeah uh so i give this one two leaves what do you think dory one i'm probably not gonna watch this and mel uh, three. I probably am going to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Mel's one of the ones she doesn't. I love that. tearjerker. Yeah. I love the Hallmark drama, especially when nobody dies of cancer. I don't like the ones where people are dying of cancer. Yeah. But like I like the ones where it's like families are doing stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Sad things. All right. But. Next we have one summer, and and this is is on the twenty sixth of September. So it's pushing it being a summer movie. I don't know what's going on there, but. Anyway, it has Sam Page, Sarah Drew, Amanda Scholl, uh, director Rich Newey, who we just enjoyed in doing Crashing Through the Snow. Uh, he also has done The Good Witch. Our writer Maria Nation, who did your favorite, Dory, Journey Back to Christmas. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely and not. This is, this is horrifying. Uh, Dashing Through the Snow, The Beach House. There's a whole bunch. And then Michael Reese is his first time. Uh, and it's Jack takes his son and daughter to his late wife's beachside hometown, hoping to heal and become closer. The summer brings visions of the past that could forge a new Ooh. path forward. And this is actually based on a novel by David Bal- Baldacci. He actually did The Christmas Train. Oh. He wrote that book. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there, I know. Uh, but I have to say, just Sam Page, Sarah Drew, Amanda Schul, that is a great lineup. And her, like, Instagrams and stuff about making this movie, it seemed like, I mean, I know they almost always are like, this is the greatest thing ever, but... She was just so like talking about how moved she was about telling the story and it just hyped me up a little bit. I mean, I love her so much and I feel like her and Sam Page will have good chemistry. Yeah. And so I'm kind of hopeful on this one, actually. Uh, what do you think, Mel? I am also, I mean, I'm going to watch it. I am worried about the visions that I'm assuming is the dead wife. Yes. It's, a yeah. lot. it's a lot for me to deal with like uh what's the oh my god the it's like hello it's me or whatever the kelly oh yeah Martin. she's talking on the phone it's like her husband her dead husband is like sending her messages through the phone or whatever yeah. that stuff makes me cry yeah. like so much it's a lot it's a lot i mean it's so the dealing with grief is a lot and this um, is going to be the same weekend as the nikki deloach movie so it's going to oh, be a lot of emotion going on it's gonna be a lot yeah um but i'm definitely gonna watch this unless it makes me too sad and then i'll turn it off <laughs> <laughs> what do you think tori i'm uh mm, <laughs> i don't i don't think this is gonna be for me um, this sounds very sad to me. Um, but you're right, Rachel. This does have a very strong cast, so that might pull me in. But like, 
I just don't think that I'm going to be prepared for this level of emotion until November. I need a few more months of yeah. peace. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna we'll be, see what I can do. I'm going to be optimistic on this one and give it four leaves. We'll see. But uh, what do you think, Mel? I'm going to give it three due to probable sadness. <laughs> I'm, <sorry. laughs> I'm going to give it two leaves. All right. Then next on the 3rd of October, we have Rise and Shine, Benedict Stone. And this stars Tom Everett Scott, Mia Maestro, and Ola Ballantine. Directed by Peter Benson, our friend Peter Benson. Uh, and uh, writer Phaedra Patrick, new to Hallmark. Benedict Stone's life is turned upside down when his teenage niece arrives on his doorstep. Except she might be the change that Benedict desperately needs. So this sounds almost like, I like guess, Silas Marner kind of an idea, like the, the sort of the curmudgeonly old man has to all of a sudden become a parent and changes him uh, around. And uh, so I, I hope it'll be good. It sounds cute to me. Uh, what do you think, Mel? I, I mean, I love this name. I can't get enough. It's yeah. like, it's, it's like good. a young adult book, you know, mm-hmm. the title of a young adult book. This this plot we've seen a million times, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be good. Um, I don't know. I guess mildly optimistic. Yeah. I say. What do you think, Dory? I like Tom Everett Scott in these movies. I wish he did more. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably going to watch this one. Um, yay. Peter Benson director. I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see. Yeah. I'm going to give it three leaves. Uh, what do you think, Mel? I think three sounds right. And Dory? I will also give it three. All right. Next, we have The Vows We Keep. This is on the 10th of October. Fiona Gubelman and Antonio Cayon, Linda Thorson, and it's an event planner, must organize the perfect wedding for her sister in less than a month when she finds out that the Rosewood, a historic inn and beloved wedding venue, is being sold. So the plot is really actually kind of not for me, but <laughs> um, but I- I'm going to give this a pretty high leaf just because Fiona and Antonio. And Antonio, when I interviewed him in June, he really sold this. He did a good job. <laughs> and uh, so I'm excited to see them together. I like both of them a lot. Uh, I'm going to give it 3.5 leaves. Uh, what do you think, uh, Dory? I'm giving it five. I'm very excited. I'm really happy for Antonio getting a lead role um, in a non <laughs> a non Christmas and Evergreen movie. Keep them coming, Hallmark. I wish this was on Hallmark Channel. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really. It doesn't sound. It doesn't. No, it doesn't give me movies and mysteries vibes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just based on a synopsis. But I know that where they were filming was really beautiful, and um, I really like Fiona Gubelman as well. So I'm very excited for this. Very, very excited. What do you think, Mel? I norm. I don't. I really don't like wedding planning. Like when a wedding is the center of the plot, I'm not in, but I love Antonio to the moon and back. So this will get all the leaves from me. Full leaves. Yeah. All, all right. Leaves. Last movie. <laughs> the postables are can't contain, can't contain their excitement. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I want to say before that I have a fairly lengthy little plot summary. So if you don't want to get any, if you don't want to know anything about this movie, I don't consider this a spoiler because it's out there, you know, it's just like a trailer, but you can stop listening and, uh, and then, you know, come back in a couple of minutes when we're finished talking about science. Yeah. Bit. Hit that 15 second button like four <laughs> times, okay. but maybe even more than that. Yeah. 10 times. Yeah. Okay. So this of course stars Eric Mabius, Kristen Booth, Crystal Lowe, Jeff Gustafsson. And the plot is going to be as Shane and Oliver prepare for their wedding. They must pause to help a young boy fighting leukemia reunite with his long lost friend. 
Their search is complicated by Shane's mother, who arrives with her own plan for their wedding. Meanwhile, Rita and Norman navigate the challenges of trying to start a family, but a new employee in the dead letter office may deliver the answer. So this sounds so cute. I mean, nobody can pull off these kinds of emotional storylines like Martha, uh, the, nobody can pull off these stories like Martha Williamson, who does Science Sale Delivered. She just has that gift of being able to write, I think, these emotional stories where it feels earned and you, you're you so invested in our characters plus then the new characters that are writing and uh, that are then in the, new, in the new movie. And so this whole thing with the, with the young boy finding leukemia and find, trying to find his friend, I just have full confidence that they're going to pull that off and make it great. And, and, you know, Rita and Norman trying to have a family with all of his foster, uh, you know, sort of things. I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, and then also you have Shane's mother coming into town and her planning like the what that's going to be great. It's just, I, I'm so excited. Five leaves, of course. All right. Cause I, I love the sign seal delivered uh, movies. And I think they are, especially the Christmas movie, I think is one of the best things that Hallmark's ever made. I absolutely love it. But yeah. Uh, what about you? I, Dory, are you a postable? I am. I, I came to these movies late. I didn't start watching them until probably this time last year. Um, Mm -hmm. This was kind of a pandemic uh, binge for me. I think Hallmark did a marathon with all the movies. And so I watched them all. And I think it's a great series. I'm very excited. Like all the leaves, these movies, these movies are always really well done. And I just love Eric Mabius. I have loved him since Ugly mm-hmm. Betty. I yeah. just want to give him a hug. Um, so I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah. And I'm thrilled for like the hardcore postables who have been, you know, all over social media I, and I pleading like, for another yes. movie. And, and so I am thrilled for them. Thrilled. And I would like to say something to the hardcore postables. Please try to enjoy this and don't like give it a couple weeks before you immediately start on your next campaign for the next movie. Please, <laughs> please <laughs> just, I, it's just have a second to appreciate things <laughs> when you actually get them. And I, that would make me so happy. <laughs> I know it's, it's probably wishful thinking, but just take a second to actually be grateful that you got it. And before we start, the next campaign, please. Mel, what do you think? Are you a postable? I am hardcore postable. Yes. Like these, I also came to these movies late. I cannot, I mean, I don't know how long ago I started watching them and then I could not stop. And the series is like, to me, there's, this is the best thing. The This series is the best thing that Hallmark has ever done. I agree. It is the, the it's like the way that the movies so many Hallmark movies, it's like one, you, it can be one thing or the other, you know, it's like either it's sad and like emotional or it's like a romance, a quirky romance. And yeah. these movies can do them both. And I know it's like a little scary to see a child with leukemia in the synopsis. Like it's going to be too sad, but they just have a way of making it okay. Yeah. Like you said, it's all, you always end the movie not feeling like garbage, like the saddest garbage. So I love these movies. I was I thought they were done. I honestly thought they were going to make any more. Um, so when this notice or whatever popped up, I you know I was gleeful, just mm-hmm. like with the murder she baked, like or you know murder she bakes or whatever it is. I thought those were done too, and I just I love these little gifts that they're throwing our way. What I do you it. What do you think made them bring it back? Because I thought it was done too for sure. Um, I am assuming. I actually don't know, but I'm assuming maybe it was hard for a while to get the cast together. Maybe for a while they thought, oh, it's not in vogue anymore. But like right now, everywhere, it's like all people want is properties that they recognize. You know what I mean? That has a built in audience. And I feel like Mm -hmm. they're like, well, this is a safe bet. Um, But I don't know, though. What do you I don't know. Rachel, do you have any insight? I mean, I I I don't have any insight, but I I I think that it probably didn't hurt all the constant 
campaigning and uh, and all of that. But uh, I I think that I have to assume that Martha Williamson had another story to tell. You know that that had to be part of it at least that she you know wasn't done and had another story. But you know who who knows? But do we all agree on this one? Five leaves. Oh my god, all the leaves. Yeah, all the leaves. Yeah, not, for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. what's it? It's Norman Dorman, right? Norman uh-huh. Dorman. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I love. It. I love this. I love these movies. Everybody should watch these movies. If you have the Hallmark, yeah. whatever app or whatever, they're all on there. Um, and you can just, except for the Christmas yeah. one, for some reason uh, you have to buy, but you know what? It's worth the it's money. It's worth it. The Christmas one is so good. It's, and it actually like, it's, it's maybe it's up there. One of the best faith based like films period that I've ever seen. I think they handle it so well. And so without like, it's not heavy handed. It's just him sharing who he is and helping Shane, you know, through this tough time. And I, I, I just love it. I think it's so good. But one quick thing before we go, uh, if people are into the lifetime thrillers, <laughs> uh, there is a movie coming up uh, for lifetime uh, that is directed by our friend, Randy Carter, who did the good witch podcast with us. And it's, you know, one of those, uh, one of those, I mean, one of those lifetime movies, it's called Killer Cheer Mom. And it's coming, <laughs> I love it's it. coming on the 27th of August, or 28th, sorry, 28th of August. And it stars Denise Richards. So, you know, God, it's, it's, it's she crazy. loves those murder, those murderous yeah. cheerleader movies are like, I love it. All over. Yeah, it's like their Shark Week, basically, yeah. is murder cheerleaders. She's perfect for that. Yeah. I'm yeah. here. For, I'm here for that. I'll watch so it. So I'm going to be. I don't normally watch the thrillers, but I want to support Randy. So I am going to be watching it. And uh, and anyway, it's just cool. One of our team that's directing a movie. Uh, and then also uh, on Lifetime in October, they are doing a special movie for Breast Cancer Awareness Month called The List of a Lifetime. And it is stars Patricia Velasquez, Kelly Hu, and Shannon Doherty. And it follows Brenda Lee, who is diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer and sets on a journey to find a daughter she gave up uh, for adoption. So I guess the alternate title was Breast Cancer Bucket List, mm. this movie. And I the, the, they had a little promo, and it did look pretty sweet and heartwarming and any anyway so i'm i'm definitely going to watch that and then also we have uh for digi channel it's kind of exciting they have a one of their digi channel original movies under wraps uh was one of, if not the first one of the first disney channel original movies and they are remaking it this october october 1st and uh, it's uh, have you ever had a friend that's a mummy Gilbert, Marshall, and Amy find a stolen mummy named Harold. The race Harold. Is on. Harold. Yeah. The race is on to get Harold back to his coffin before it's too late. So the original Under Wraps is a lot of fun. And so I'm hopeful that they can make a good uh, a good remake. But uh, we'll see. But anyway, that's coming up too. For a mummy named it's like Harold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like a Harold. No, it's Harry and the Hendersons. Never mind. A Bigfoot named Harry. At least we have one movie. When we also have the um, the Muppets Haunted House, Haunted Mansion, which I'm really excited what? about too. So at least we'll have two movies coming out <laughs> that are uh, going to be like Halloween, you know, focused themes. Which yeah, be, yeah, which will be fun. I guess there's so. also like Candyman, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so there we go. That's just uh, if people are interested in that. So we've got so much, so much viewing going. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So let us know how many leaves you would give these various upcoming films uh, in the comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say or on Twitter. And uh, Mel, where can people find you? People can find me in my living room. Uh... I don't know. Watching, watching Hallmark. Um, yeah. I I guess I'm on Instagram. Mm. Uh, my handle is M Rafford. It's you know pretty straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I have a, guys, we, we have a Facebook all the feels. Page. Yeah, all the feels. We have a Facebook page that I have been neglecting, but I once the season, once the Christmas season ramps up, we'll be back on there. Um, and then we have an Instagram that Dory keeps going. Oh yeah, and so we do Dory, not have an Instagram. We have I a Twitter. Have, did I say Twitter. Instagram? Oh, I meant Twitter. Twitter. I'm sorry. I was gonna say what? No, we I do not have like, an Instagram. I was like, is she bullying me into making no, an no. Instagram account on the Hallmark? I'm just account? an old lady, and you know, words. No uh, Twitter. So, Dory, what about you? Uh, yeah, you can find us at All the Feels Pod on Twitter. Um, I also have another podcast, a romance novel podcast with my co-host Lisa um, that is called Y'all This Book. You can find us wherever you download podcasts. We're also on Y'all This Book at Y'all This Book on Twitter and y'all.this.book on instagram so um but yeah like mel said we will be back all the feels all the feels we'll be back for the bracket is happening we have not recorded in a really long time but the bracket is happening all right so we've all been we've all been nesting (laughs) or in our alone (laughs) yeah Well, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, the Home Rookies Pod and Home Rookies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes to any of our podcasts, please leave your ratings and reviews. It really, really helps us, especially as we're going to the Christmas season. Those reviews help people find the podcast. So please take a second to do that. We also have our uh, we also have our merch store uh, with tons of fun designs. We even have some fall designs that we're going to be adding. So make sure to check out over there. We also have our patron group where we have monthly movie watch alongs that are a lot of fun. That's only $2 to join. You can participate in any of the activities. Please take a look at that. And uh, if you are watching this uh, on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We sure appreciate that so much as well. And thanks so much, ladies. It's a lot of fun. We'll look forward to fall. It's going to be great. Yes. Bring on <laughs> the low temps. That's bring right. On. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.